Nikon F2 cameras. This is F2 Photomic, one of the earlier models, made from about 1971 through to about 1980. Very solidly made, very dependable mechanical cameras. What I'm going to do now is talk through the, the variants that were available and also walk you through the, um, the various features of the camera. Now the variants, it does get a bit complicated. The camera was available from 1971 through to, 19, through to 1980. And in 1977, Nikon um, introduced an update in the way that the lens is metered with the prisms. So in 1977, on top of the fundamentally four cameras they made, they introduced another, another two cameras. So it can get a little bit confusing. What I'm going to do is just run through each model, um, but before I do so, I just want to talk about the uh, the lens coupling. As, as I mentioned, in 1977, it was changed from non-AI to AI lenses. Now, this is a non-AI lens. Um, little rabbit ears on the top. Those little rabbit ears coupled with a pin in the camera, which is just there. As you change the aperture, that moves and moves a pin in the camera. Basically, the, the coupling tells the, the metering in the camera what aperture is set on the lens. In 1977, the non-AI lenses were updated to AI lenses. This is an AI lens. Still has the rabbit ears on the top. Doesn't use them though. This was just there for backward compatibility. The AI lenses have a little ridge just there which couples with the AI coupling on the camera. The advantage with the new AI system was that it allowed lenses to be mounted and dismounted a lot more easily. I'll put a link up above that just explains more about that. That's something you should know about if you're a Nikon user. Okay, so let's just wind back to 1971. Nikon's first F2s were introduced. They fundamentally had two versions. There was the non-metered version. So the version with the non-metered head which was a lot neater and a lot smaller than, than this version. This is the first of the metered cameras. So there was the non-metered version, and then there was the photomic version. The photomic version is this version, which has the meter inbuilt. The non-metered cameras do look a lot nicer. The, the head's a lot smaller, it's a lot neater, um, but obviously because there was no meter, it was less popular. So most cameras you see these days will be the metered versions. So this was the first metered version, the F2 photomic. Um, the, the, the readout in the viewfinder was a needle, so you just change aperture and shutter speed settings until you got the needle in the middle. Once the needle was in the middle, you had the correct exposure. Nikon also introduced an F2S, a Nikon F2 Photomic S. The Photomic version has a series of LEDs in the viewfinder, and once you balance the LEDs in the middle, of the, uh, in the middle you have the correct exposure. Subsequently, the F2S was improved, um, and they introduced the F2SB. Now the F2SB also had, had LEDs in the uh, viewfinder, but it was just a bit more advanced. Now, the F2 Photomic, the F2S, the F2SB, they all take the non-AI lenses. So we're all pre-1977. Post-1977, when Nikon introduced the newer AI lenses with the AI coupling, they introduced two more models. They introduced the F2A, and the F2AS. The F2A had a needle readout, the F2AS had an, uh, an LED readout. So, six models fundamentally. Model one was the non-metered non version, then you had the F2 Photomic, where needle, non-AI, you have the F2S, um, non-AI with LED readouts, you have the F2SB, non-AI, with the LED readouts, and you then have the two AI cameras, the F2A, F2AS. Okay, sorry it's a bit complicated, but that was that that was just that's just the way it is with uh, with, with Nikon. Um, okay, so what does the camera give you? Mechanical shutter, basic functionality, very robust, very reliable. Looking at the uh, top first of all, you have the wind on crank there, shutter, sp um, shutter speed dial just there. The shutter speed dial couples with the ASA dial on the metered cameras. If, it, if this had a non-metered head on it, you wouldn't have this tall section here. You just have a, a traditional shutter speed dial just there. That's obviously the, um, the um, shutter release. 
On this side you have the film rewind and these two rails here left and right take a proprietary Nikon flash fitting. It doesn't have an ordinary um, flash shoe. You'd have to have a special shoe which just slides, slides over there. It was very solid. Um, a very solid mounting, a lot better than the, the traditional mounting and the mounting we used today on flash guns, but it, it didn't really catch on. You can buy something called a Nikon AS11, an adapter, which slides onto there, which allows you to mount ordinary flash units with ordinary flash shoes on them. Just looking at the front, self timer, just there, depth of field preview. On this side, you have the lens release. If I quickly drop the lens off and just push this button in here and pull the lever behind around, you'll see there's a mirror locker. That there is just the uh, coaxial flash connection. Okay, just looking at the back, that little button there is used to release the viewfinder. You push that button in there while pushing this little button around here on the head and the, um, the head just comes off. Once the head is off, you can remove screens again by just pushing that little button there. The viewfinder has standard Nikon correction lenses can, uh, that can be screwed in or standard eyepieces if you want those in there. Looking at the bottom, uh, a little button to rewind film, motor, a motor drive coupling, a tripod bush standard quarter inch, battery compartment just takes two 10L14s, mechanical camera so all the batteries do is power the meter if you've got a metered head and this here is just the, is the, uh, is the back release, slightly unusual. You turn that round Back just pops open, very traditional layout in the back. Now, if you're buying one of these things, they're anything between 40 and 50 years old. I'll put a link up to a, a video that goes into more detail about what you need to check if you're buying second hand. But one thing you really must check that I go into in more detail in the video is the light bat, is the light seals and the light baffles. Do check those very, very carefully because if a camera like this hasn't been regularly serviced, then the light baffles will need replacing because in time they're foam rubber based, they do disintegrate. So there's nothing you can do to stop that deterioration apart from servicing. So if you are buying one of these cameras, it is important that you either buy something that has been serviced recently or when you buy it, you price in the cost of a service. And given that the cost of a service can be as much as the value of the camera, that, that can become an issue. But if you want a good reliable camera, it's worth doing because they do go on forever. You know, mechanically, these cameras are absolutely fantastic. Very, very good. Meets the, ele the electronics and the metering heads, not so reliable in the earlier ones. They're getting on to 50 years old, not so surprising, but generally very good in the later ones. So if you're looking at one of these cameras, I'd recommend an F2A or an F2AS if you can. I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, please stick them in the boxes below and I'll respond whenever I can. Um, otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.